don't I know? What you watched last summer. Woohoo! I'm so excited to be back in the saddle. <laughs> yeah. Freaking, it's been a it's been quite a bit. It's been a minute, but we're back at it, baby. <laughs> and better than ever. Frankie, what's the show's name? Since it's been a while. Oh my god, thank you. I literally would have gotten to the end before I realized we didn't introduce the show <laughs> for like the 15th time. This is I Know What You Watched Last Summer, and I'm Frankie Stein. Who are you? Ozzy Prescott. Back in action, just here. like the Looney Tunes. You're here. And uh, Have you ever watched that movie? Which one? Looney Tunes, back in action. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I thought... <laughs> that, that, that answers everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you would get it because it came out like when we were kids, like I think like two thousand two, three, something like that. No, I was very much a Disney Channel Cartoon Network. I I loved Scooby Doo, legal government name Scoobert Dubert. I love Scoobert Dubert. Is that is that the German version? <laughs> <laughs> Scoobert Dubert. <laughs> Speaking of German, though. Yeah. Mm. So we are talking about the German show Dark. We're doing this episodically. It's not deep dive. It's we're going in to our thoughts, feelings, emotional responses <laughs> to yes. each episode. And I'm so excited because this show hit home. Like, because I found it during the pandemic and I needed something. I needed something cinematically. Not to say that this is particularly hopeful in a time when yeah. most people were wanting something hopeful. Because at this time, everybody was talking about Tiger King because it was something dramatic to watch. Um, that was as much okay. drama as people were getting into was Tiger King. Mm -hmm. But personally, yeah. I had been following the story of Tiger King as it was happening. So by the time it got to the Netflix show, people were like, have you watched it? And I was like, I've been reading about it as it's gone on. I don't need to watch it. <laughs> Just, right. I already know. So I was watching All the details. Dark. Yeah, exactly. So I was watching Dark. Nobody I knew had watched Dark. I made my partner sit through it. The first couple episodes, he was like, no, it's, I don't want to. And I was like, you need to watch this show because it is so fucking good. And I need someone to talk to <laughs> about it. Ever since then, my partner, you, and uh, somebody that I only have a relationship via Twitter and Instagram. We have not seen each other in real life since probably 2007, but <laughs> we've followed each other online for that amount of time. And we DM'd about it because she knows she's fluent in german now oh that's great I, and she was like yeah no i it's a really good show we talked about it and she i binged the whole thing but she had to stop for because i think she's in the air force something like she flies planes so she mm. had to stop for a reason via airplane and she didn't make it past season two and she's like should i keep going and i was like please <laughs> For the love of God, yeah. keep going. Damn. But when I found out you uh, watched it, I was like, let's go. Uh, yeah, I was so excited. You're the only other person I met in, yeah, in my life. And then probably anybody else I would talk to who's seen. So I asked one of my friends and they hadn't. And then when I tried to tell people about, oh, you should watch it. None of them would ever would. So I I'm like, well, it's so annoying. I just like, well, I guess I just have to face it. I got to like, just keep this to my, you know, myself, I guess. But at that time, I think I remember starting it uh, around 2017 and we were working together and there was one person I had told to watch it because he had seen it like scrolling past different movies or shows on Netflix. And he was like, oh, is it that uh, one show with uh, a guy with the raincoat or like a kid with raincoat uh, kind of looks like it, but it's not it. Yeah. Uh, like it, the clown. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I was telling him, yeah, yeah, that's, that's that show. It was okay. Yeah. I kind of wanted to watch it, but I was kind of afraid that it would just be like a weird rip off of it. And then, like how wrong he was and I, I was too because to, i thought the same thing but um i don't know at that time something just told me yeah just take a chance on it and i'm very thankful because the show is just a roller coaster of emotions of all i don't know just strong mystery and keeps wanting you if you get into the first episode and which is a really good hook to kind of keep you going forward with it uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just kept wanting to know more and more. And I wanted the truth of like, what's going to happen because uh, with all these people, I started at 2017. I wish I had mentioned it to you at that time, but uh, we were too busy 
work school i I don't know yeah uh, concerts oh i, yeah, I think that was peak tour era for me so i was flying 100 percent jet setting everywhere <laughs> so it never happened until i think around yeah pandemic time maybe i think it was 2021 kind of like when we were conceptualizing the show and stuff mm-hmm. um those ideas i think we talked about it and you you told me you were watching it, I think. I was like, no way. And then so that's kind of how it happened, where we uh, had a bromance of, um, <laughs> of you know, this dark piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> the bromance continues. And the saga but goes on. Sometimes I think it would be cool if we lived in Germany, where because I talked to, not German, but a Polish friend of mine, so European, right? And I guess the show is kind of bigger over there. Because I don't feel like anybody over here is literate. No, <laughs> not at all. I'm like, you should watch it. And they're like, oh, is it? And I'm like, it's in German. And they're like, oh. And they just kind of get real quiet after that. And I'm like, just say you can't read. Just... Yeah, just be honest with me. We can stop talking about this. Just be honest with me. though. I'm, yeah, I'm don't feign you know? interest because I'm going to keep talking about it because it's that good. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense if it's like way bigger over there where people can read things yeah. <laughs> if they don't speak German. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, and so, yeah, um, the person I was talking to, she was telling me, uh, oh yeah, it's a pretty big show. And I was like, gosh, like, I wish I was fucking over there and could speak their languages or whatever and just kind of uh, go dive deep and, you know, a conversation with one of those people. I don't know, here in America, everybody's like a big fan of like, love is blind or something yeah <laughs> yeah i could go <laughs> could go like 10 hours talking about whatever who dated who and i want to do that yeah. <laughs> but with this show and yes. i can't so because i so unfortunately i feel like if people were to ask me to describe it obviously there is a huge component that is a surprise like it's a cornerstone of the show and how the show works and operates and nothing in the plot could exist without this factor being in it but it's, I think it comes into play in like the third episode. So we won't touch on it today, but mm-hmm. it's one of those shows where I don't want to give too much away, giving a synopsis to somebody. So the way I describe it to them without really going into the plot is like, it's about a small town. Picture it like Stranger Things, except the writing is good. <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, it's also in German and it's for adults and it's good Mm -hmm. because stranger things was like fine it was fun and then it really tanked for me personally i did watch the fourth season somewhat against my will and i was like this is doo-doo and i'm really excited for all these kids to be out of their contracts because i don't imagine that they want to keep going it's it feels like the plot's very much beating a dead horse but Mm -hmm. it's great to nostalgia bait gen xers and give small children the feeling that they're watching something scary without it being like too scary but right if you were kind of like disenchanted with how stranger things turned out watch dark that's all i can say yeah it's a good transition you know Mm -hmm. if you're in the middle of watching stranger things just stop because it doesn't get better than probably season two i don't know that's where i stopped i'm like i'm not watching that's this anymore where you should have so good on you right <laughs> yes <laughs> no that's that's exactly where it fell off so you picked the perfect time to jump ship yeah you know i, I got a good eye i got a good eye so i don't have like, good eyes but i have a good eye yeah i was gonna say get your glasses out because the subtitles <laughs> are necessary it this show actually it was after watching it for the first time that i was like what am i doing i need to learn german (laughs) so i started duolingo and i was like the next time i watch dark i want to be able to watch it without the subtitles i want to be fluent not the case i still need the subtitles (laughs) but yeah it's cool if you're also learning german because there are a lot of words that i recognize and it's you know, like the conjugation of different verbs and pronunciation is different when it's like an AI generated thing from Duolingo and me as mm. like, ich lieben dich. Like, <laughs> either way, you're still going to need the subtitles. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need the subtitles. And I, I think Europeans or people around the world have um, probably an e- not an easier time, but it's more... Um, they got some good flow wanting to learn languages or different languages, probably like English, because 
a lot of media like around the world like global media is like in english so uh they probably have more motivation i think than us because i mean it's so easy here or at least in english speaking places because everything's so set up for us to just use that language um right i also think geography too america feels relatively isolationist because it's like america and then mexico but then you know the whole we speak english in america and type shit whereas like if you're in europe you go 20 minutes by train one way you're gonna have an entirely different country with an entirely different language so it's like you kind of have to also the literacy rate in america is (laughs) the average literacy rate is seventh grade which is not good really yeah that's horrible no that makes me proud to be an american (laughs) just because i can't read i can't read the other statistics from other countries saying how (laughs) much better they are than me I, so I was looking at who did the sound, who scored this, who did the sound design, because they deserve the biggest, fattest, sloppiest, open mouth kiss, because I oh, yeah. love it so much. Like, everything about the sound in this is so immersive and delicious. It's so good. And so when I... <laughs> I looked up who was involved and I was like, who did this? Who do I know to send my fan mail to? I found this article and it said, Netflix's first Germany language original series. And I was like, Germany language. Could that be German? (laughs) (laughs) Using your your, your big brain. Using every wrinkle that the brain has to offer. Anyway, I found out Home Slice's name is Alexander <laughs> Wurst. So, Alexander, I'm coming for you. <laughs> awesome. Don't you love the, the theme to the, the show when it first starts up? It's so, visually too, it's so good. And yeah. the visuals have more meaning when you develop through the plot. But the first <laughs> episode felt very, it was a really good hook to get you in. And it was a lot of character introduction too because like the video or the episode starts with a bunch of pictures of a bunch of people connected with string on the wall very much like a more sinister version of that charlie day meme and (laughs) (laughs) and then i'm not even kidding as the show went on and things progressed and the plot thickens i felt more and more like charlie in that in that photo where i was like so this (laughs) like pointing at it I I felt like I needed one to keep track of everything that was going on but Mm. yeah we get some interesting characters and obviously like the thing that kind of puts you right in the thick of it is the fact that one of the first shots that we have of somebody is hanging themselves Mm. and you're immediately like um the fuck and you want to know why and who he is and the situations around it and so we've got Jonas and his mom hannah i think that was in like july june july of that year and Mm -hmm. it does a little time jump to october Mm -hmm. as like jonas is jonas is figuring out life and i knew i was gonna like him because of his yellow raincoat and who else has a yellow raincoat Coraline, and i love that bitch oh Oh, that's a good move (laughs) and he is like navigating all of his trauma around that But I'm looking at Hannah and how into October she's having an affair with Ulrich. Do you think she was cheating or do you think she was using Ulrich as like a coping mechanism? Because I was like, damn, Um, you really just jumped right into that, Hannah. Unless it was already ongoing. um, The way I took it, I don't think she's coping for anything. I think she... um... I think she is really enamored by him. Obviously, like she expresses that. Like she says, uh, yeah, (laughs) honestly... I, I hate it and it's like my my bad uh uh I have like this bad like fetish I'm like god that girl's that I mean that woman is really fucking hot and I I don't know why I like older women and I can't help it and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's just so alluring you know but uh and I, they probably cast her really well because um like I feel that from her but uh yeah she she describes you know she's saying I love you to Auric and um uh, 
she says it twice or can't really find it in himself to say it back no to he's like you're beautiful back and it's like that's not it guy <laughs> that's not it yeah yeah you know and i mean it for him it's like an exciting game he's um it's a thrill for him um i mean obviously i think he because he can't say that he really does love his his wife he mm -hmm. just um is either going through some some phase or something that is um you know leading him down this path of uh, infidelity with um hannah i mean no i don't think it's open i think she just really does like him and um you know they're just going out about this thing in secret uh, which is actually probably one of the themes too uh, that I wrote down as a uh, secrets. You know, uh, everyone's got a secret it seems, yes, or has feelings that they, they don't disclose. I looked up because I was like, I wonder if this town it takes place in Winden, and so I was like, I wonder if Winden is a real place or if it was just like a fictional town made up. It is real. I get eerie vibes from small towns, very much like I, secrets, but uh -huh. also like everybody being in everybody's business. And that's feeling like a prerequisite to be a part of a small town. So then as a defense and like the pendulum swinging the opposite way of everybody being in everybody's business, they all do have secrets. So it's real. The population is 1,074 as of this Google search. Wow. It is one square mile. Wow, town. that's crazy. That's so bananas to me <laughs> as a not small townian. But I know you're cutting yourself off at the knee kind of with how much you know, but my brain is like yes. a spaghetti strainer in that there is so much that I have forgotten. It will be like I'm experiencing it for the first time again. Really? Oh, that's oh yeah. perfect. Yeah, so I, I wish I had that. Some things stick some things just right through the, the strainer holes. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited to, to relearn. Relive. I will, yeah, there's a lot I'll be, for the second time, experiencing for the first time. So there's immediate chemistry that you see, like, between Marta and Jonas. And I am so obsessed with the fact that this whole cast was so well done, and they all act it so well it doesn't feel like i'm watching a thing of fiction even though it will get so sci-fi yeah like i've been watching riverdale and these are on so vastly different tiers of acting really oh my god <laughs> oh I, uh, I, right okay because i gotta i put myself out there because i've never seen that show i've always heard like oh this is a great show you should watch it and i'm like i don't know i just never got into it i don't no, if you'd like it it's i'm in it for the meme i'm in it because it's silly and it's goofy and it's camp in a way uh it goes mm. the writing in it is pretty wackadoodle i'm only in season i think i got to season four but the acting in it by some of these some characters is so earnest and not believable that it makes you laugh whereas yeah. like this it's so well done it feels like it's happening and i'm there like watching it all fly on the wall yeah yeah because mm -hmm. like you know right away that even before marta says anything that just like through their eye contact alone that they have a history but what is mm -hmm. it and so do you think that it's bartos 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 yeah um uh, the the s uh, what is it i think there's an s and a z in his bartosz. name but bartos what i learned in polish and it must be a little bit similar in uh, german is that the s and a z make a sh sound bartosz i should know this duolingo owl is gonna knife me later <laughs> he's gonna be mad <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> pissed off he's gonna come okay, into beach. my home and <laughs> Um, yeah call me a shy cop um, and hit me over the head <laughs> but bartosz do you think he knew that marta and jonas jonas had a thing because he 100 percent, 100 percent. because that seemed uh, really I... shady the way he looked at jonas uh like during the assembly and he had been giving jonas a synopsis of like things he had missed while he was gone at the mm -hmm mental health hospital and he was like yeah no you didn't miss much and then marta comes up and gives him a kiss and he's like okay maybe you missed one thing and just like the way he looked at him i was like oh you snake you absolute bitch 
that made Asshole. me so mad i was like what the fuck dude you're not yeah, a friend i agree mm-hmm. uh i like no way kid, I, I mean yeah that's so so bad uh okay in one in one sense he was trying to be a good friend like um giving him uh confidence uh, hey because he's coming he's barely coming back to school he's like uh, everything will be fine basically like just ignore the people and he's kind of um he, there's like a group of kids right walking in front of them looking at uh jonas and like judging him right and um bartosh is uh basically just saying well, like what are you looking at and uh defending him but so you know like all right he seems like a good friend and then that moment that scene happens and yeah obviously it's so um so obvious that um jonas feels like conflicted that they're holding hands or kissing and uh you can tell yeah there was definitely a pass between them and yeah just the shitty that's like where i kind of what the fuck you know um Mm -hmm. with uh the people i guess um with the kids and um well we'll see with the adults how they're kind of all similar that they all kind of run this way um with, Shitty. Uh, <laughs> yeah just not really being honest not being what you know what you say you are and you're just you're acting your actions are showing different right mm-hmm. it, it's weird because like martha looks i feel like seeing her in that scene you can tell, or at least I feel that she still has feelings for Jonas and also doesn't want him to be hurt, but, you know, she's in this thing now. And so there's no walking back or really explaining everything. Mm -hmm. One, Jonas is already, he's like, feels defeated probably than any boy could ever feel at what age. I don't know. How old are they? 15, 16? 16, yeah. Yeah. At that time, like, one probably is going to hit the hardest is like your dad just killed himself you got sent away you're being judged by all oh, everybody now that you came back now like the cherry on the cake of the shit cake he's about to eat is uh his girlfriend well <laughs> dingleberry on the shit pie <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fucking uh dating your best friend now and you got to watch them make out and you know fucking hold hands all the time yeah. got to be really 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 shitty so i felt just so bad for i was like god this guy can't catch a break <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, he, he he won't catch a break for quite some time and his power but... was out <laughs> <laughs> yeah he couldn't make his toast to his fucking breakfast he That's just sat ready. there he's like i guess i'll eat i guess i'll eat an apple maybe and then his therapist wasn't really listening to him i was like bro come on but i tell you what I feel like those bike rides he goes on maybe lift his spirits because, oh my God, it's freaking gorgeous. I I don't know if it was shot in Winton, but wherever they did shoot it is so pretty to me. The forest is flat, as we've seen, and it, or flat-ish, I would say, but we, like, the caves that were in there, you know that they're going to play a huge part because (laughs) the scary-ass sounds that were associated, like, the zooms in, but the initial zoom and like the fact that it paired perfectly with the letter that Jonas's dad left also Mm. that grandma is both so strong and sinister in the same way like she gives me like real creep vibes like (laughs) so I feel like she could be Um, in a horror movie she like kind of freaks me out wait uh um Jonas's grandma yeah does she like I think it's it's her stoic, like, and that's coming from me, and I feel like I'm relatively stoic. She's just so, I feel like she's so self-contained, but, because, like, uh-huh. that whole time, she was able to hold on to that letter without opening it, and I was yeah. like, I don't know if I could have restrained myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I could have either. I mean, I guess it's just impulsiveness, but maybe, like, I don't know, Germans are more um, respectful. I guess <laughs> more restrained <laughs> don't open <laughs> until this date yeah I well end yeah, time I have... like at that oh, hour yeah, that was crazy second was it hour and oh, I thought it was seconds too no uh it was like 22 13 so like 10 13 oh, okay. p.m because we see Eric and how he is alive and he's been right. deemed missing and oh my god cops are always like oh he ran away oh they ran away and it's it's a easy way out but 
this kid had like a history of it so that that's what yeah. they're thinking and even though that doesn't make sense contextually they're like uh maybe but we see him in that little bunker with like <laughs> right round blasting in the tv yeah. and i was like oh my god he's i was like immediately i was like this kid's in like some predator's home and he's going to be trafficked you know what bugged me in that scene is that he's he's turned away looking at a wall right and he's uh he has his hands he's covering his ears because the the music's so loud mm -hmm. uh side note i also really love that song spin <laughs> me right around baby, right i didn't i had never uh, seen the music video but when they showed it i was like "Ooh, this is fun <laughs> it's glamorous yeah i i will bug me like it's it's so stupid but like man can you just it has dials like can't you just turn down the music i wonder because he's he yeah, clearly I, was in distress with the volume yeah it, if it was like built into the wall and like you just saw the screen like all right, okay i could understand like he's not gonna turn it off or he can't turn it off but he just yeah he just crowds up against the wall and he's just doing this and I'm like you could just stand up the tv is right there <laughs> they've got all the switches oh, okay um, i mean benefit of the doubt maybe it was preset <laughs> and not functional <laughs> but yeah. i never i didn't notice that yeah it was it was such a okay i never noticed that back 2017 the first time i watched it but now I'm like just stand up <laughs> <laughs> go 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 turn it off um but uh either way yeah uh and uh this boy is the the missing boy right uh eric yeah. uh holden holdenberg holden holdenderf Oden, oh. odin kirk i don't know <laughs> Oden, Oden, <laughs> hey, oppenheimer so, <laughs> something yeah i mean that kind of alludes to or like bartosh's mom she's an owner of a hotel yeah what is Bartosha's mom's name? It's, I feel like it starts with an R. I don't think we learned it. Uh, Rudolph. No, <laughs> I thought it was like Regina or something. <laughs> Regina, yeah, actually, it is Regina. I believe. Oh my uh, god, you fun. see, it's shit like that that embeds itself in my brain wrinkles, but not very integral plot points. So this will be fun. <laughs> She's so concerned because she's trying to keep up with appearances. Um, this kind of makes me think of a uh, Hot Fuzz, the movie, where the fucking small town is just so caught up and uh, trying to make it the best village. Sorry, not best town, best village everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And they like they want to win an award. They like they want it continuously and they want to keep winning it. So they hide away crimes. They hide away like any bad press that can happen. Uh, people who can make mm -hmm. the, the village look bad they don't want it so it kind of made me feel like it made me think about that she doesn't want uh that bad press getting out because she wants visitors to come and keep bringing money in because uh, if not they're gonna lose everything the town has a meeting to kind of discuss the boy the missing boy and she's just kind of tagging along with the cops like oh yeah he just ran away um you know no one abducted him or anything sinister has happened here in this town ha <laughs> ha but mm -hmm. really you know there it's quite the opposite maybe it's genetics but maybe that's why bartush is such an asshole he just <laughs> got it from his, his mom. mom yeah she has the asshole gene alexander that's the guy that hannah was massaging because that's alexander is bartush's dad married to yes. regina he runs the nuclear plant also mm -hmm. tell me how you feel i okay so it's things like chernobyl and maybe superhero mutation where like <laughs> nuclear power makes me really nervous <laughs> i feel like that's uh, a yeah. stupid thing to say but uh, like because uh -huh. i know and i've heard the benefits and like how clean the energy can be but it's like mm. remember chernobyl <laughs> do you remember that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it makes me so nervous and i'm not a scientist if that wasn't obvious but <laughs> we lived near somewhere i not you know like next door neighbors but we did live next to a place right. where they wanted to put nuclear waste and i was like um that scares me a lot actually and right to live so close to a nuclear power plant like the way that they just see those smokestacks come up all the time i would be or maybe it's steam i don't know and they're saying this yeah i would be very afraid <laughs> it, yeah <laughs> It is steam, yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks kind of like daunting. Uh, they do a really good job at uh, like exemplifying the the power plant and how huge it is, and it's like it's very daunting and sublime because uh, it's like 
it's one like a a path of great energy, but also a path to destruction. And it's just the possibility, right, of what happens. I find it useful. I think I find it as like a good way to produce energy for us because it just produces so much and can help power out, like uh, power a lot of uh, places. But then right now they don't really have uh, an easy way to kind of take care of that waste um, besides just putting it somewhere and making sure it's as secure as it possibly can be. I, I Like, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to put your all all your eggs in like one basket when it comes to energy i think it should be a little bit of everything like i'm not i'm not really against nuclear stuff as long as they do it safely like i went through a rabbit hole with nuclear facility stuff when uh, i watched chernobyl i think like a year ago the one in chernobyl that happened because okay so we're thinking about like pyramid right you got all Mm -hmm. these uh people above you telling you you have to run these tests no matter what and you have to do it this way and the main scientists or um, engineers who you know handle nuclear uh, facilities like that a lot of them knew better at the time to not uh, run these tests because it wasn't going to be safe but they're uh, the guy above them was telling them no we have to because they, i don't want to look bad basically to the people above me and mm. th- that guy basically told his um nuclear engineers or whatever like you won't work at another place if you don't do what i say and just kind of th- threatening their way of life typical and, bureaucracy yeah it was kind of shitty so they kind of went along with that because they were afraid of being ostracized and not being able to find work or anything also too i think chernobyl had uh, the way it was construction uh, constructed that building in particular the um, the nuclear facility the way it had some safety things that weren't regulated that they probably shouldn't uh, have built it in in such a way here in the states we've never had a meltdown like that we've had close calls but we had we built our facilities with systems that kind of prevent those things so we've never had a meltdown in that way and then in japan is the only one i could think of too where something kind of bad happened with nuclear stuff but that mainly happened because of the earthquake and i think tsunamis in fukushima and stuff like for me i think if i was japanese i don't think i would have had tried maybe i don't know because that's me like lacking the information of what they how they can produce energy maybe they can't with wind or sun as much as you know other places can so maybe they thought building a nuclear facility would be better to power stuff but to me it was like a recipe for big problems because they just have so many big earthquakes over there so you know those things will just happen so i i don't really understand why they decided to go that route but yeah here in america is probably not the worst place to have them but yeah storing them like yeah, like how you said, they want to store it in certain places. And uh, I think it's cool as long as uh, the people who live in those places are willing to and are compensated. I think they wanted to, but Cause yeah, I don't know. in America, we had that whole catastrophe with the, um, the Diné people or the Navajo tribe. It was so fucked. There's a book I'm reading right now called Yellow Dirt about it. So I don't want to speak too much mm-hmm. on it, but <laughs> it's so fucked. And like, all of these Diné people are tumors on tumors on tumors, like radioactivity through the roof. I was on, obviously Twitter's a cesspool, but um, there was somebody who was like actually defending the number of people put out by the Soviet Union of number of deaths that Chernobyl caused being something like 17. It was like 17, 21, something really low. And they're like, actually only 17 people died in Chernobyl and I was like you're a no. fucking clown <laughs> you're a goddamn idiot I was like that's enough Damn. internet and I just logged off I was like we're done and see that's probably that guy who's recording or getting his information from how the what the Soviet Union probably put out because they didn't want to make it look as oh, yeah. bad as no, it that's, literally was right that's the, yeah. that's the number recorded by the Soviet Union and then I'm just oh, like okay. um that's not it actually <laughs> God, it's yeah, that shit's so horrible of how many people got, you know, radiation and um, just people not knowing the, the, I mean, I guess kind of we're blessed with having the information to kind of look that stuff up now. But then like back then they didn't. And especially to the, their citizens, they never really disclose stuff like that. It's just horrible. But yeah, that is, I guess. <laughs> Info, I was like, info you're lost wrong. in the sauce, my guy. Like, you gotta yeah. get with it. They mentioned that the plant 
in Winden is coming to an end, like it's closing down, but I don't think we know why yet. And if we ever find out, hmm. I don't remember at this present time. <laughs> so No. Uh yeah, I, I don't think yeah, it doesn't pop up in this episode. Uh but I, yeah, we'll learn in I think a few more. So we don't know now. We just know it's coming to an end, I think, because this the show takes place in twenty nineteen. I think they said in twenty twenty it's closing. That means Bartosz isn't going to be a Richie Rich boy anymore. Uh, Potentially. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Potentially. Potentially. I don't well, know. I don't know what their savings look like. They sell that hotel. I'm sure they can, you know, get pretty change for that. I Maybe. But like Regina said, nobody wants to come to a town where boys go missing. Speaking of. What they, yeah. <laughs> speaking of. <we laughs> you shouldn't... scared me. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so Eric, gone somewhere mm. in okay and so worst thought like jump to the worst conclusion i'm like oh shit this kid's getting trafficked who was like what generation was it that was like at their pinnacle during the 80s is that gen x yeah so he's getting diddled by a gen x pedophile who's just really into 80s music videos because we <laughs> have another one playing too but he's in what looks like a, just like a furnished basement type thing and then the cop Ulrich's partner who I forget her name but she Charlotte yes Charlotte she Charlotte. um when her husband calls and he's like teary-eyed he's like I have to tell you something I have to tell immediately I was like oh it's this guy fucking pervert and he doesn't confess because Charlotte's like I'm literally fucking waist deep in missing child I gotta go and they go to find his weed and i was like mm. hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> get the kush but <laughs> the shots were so well done too like the way that it went back and forth between the kids in the forest and jonas's mom or grandma out of like the sinister cave comes to life we get like those scary noises and they run away and she's coming right it's like back and forth between her reading this note and crying miko goes missing and what a fit to go missing in let me just say that <laughs> that's a little skeleton costume there is not a more descriptive outfit you could go missing in you know it's always a yeah. question like what were they last wearing it's like a skeleton onesie <laughs> very easy <laughs> yeah. to spot oh my god and the casting for ulrich's mom i thought was done so well because i feel like they look very similar do you yeah did you get the same the, vibe the casting spot on everybody so looks like how they are yeah yeah very close very good uh, um yeah so i totally agree i also too i like the because it kind of alludes a little bit it gives you a uh, well, foreshadowing when uh, uh, miko is doing his magic trick with uh, his dad before they go to school obviously like we're seeing the same thing auric is the one cup he had put on top of the little object um it's no longer there he pops up the other one Boom, it's in the opposite cup now. Mm -hmm. And uh, his dad, his dad's impressed too, as the audience would probably feel the same too, watching it. He asks him, how did you do it? And Mikhail says, the question is not how, but when. So if anyone could kind of put some two brain cells and rub them together, you know, you could kind of think about what the show is going to be a little bit about. Yes. And then there was also an Albert Einstein quote at the mm. res like the very beginning of it. And it was the distinction between the past, present and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Also, I'm just going to say, I know everybody would respond to something catastrophic like their little brother going missing. Marta and Magnus, they get to the... <laughs> what? <laughs> what I'm thinking is, if what I think you're thinking is, they just left their bro, like, like hanging, basically. They just darted and left him. Well, they just left Dolan... him, and then they yell at Jonas. He was with you. I'm like, yeah, they're like, dude. <laughs> it's like, it's your brother. And yeah, Marta told magnus they're like go take him back home like he shouldn't be out here and i mean like mm. yeah mika would probably have put up a fight because you know he was what like 10 ish maybe yeah he's a kid and you know he wants to run with his older brother and sister and like do cool big kid stuff but it's mm -hmm. not the not the setting like it's past 10 you shouldn't be out in the woods no you brought your brother here you didn't enforce your other brother to go bring him back to the house so and so mm. just because 
that everybody darted everybody ran don't blame jonas yeah yeah his dad died (laughs) his dad died you're you're dating his best friend Uh, let this kid like catch a fucking break like do not dogpile on him it made me so mad i was like oh so now jonas is the bad guy like fuck off (laughs) yeah he has no real friends he just he's all there by himself so like watching it back, they're talking about whether or not Eric is alive. If mm. he's dead somewhere, he still wants to be found. It's just like a pretty grim topic. So naturally Jonas chimes in and he's like, well, my dad said <laughs> the difference between good and evil is perspective. And then everybody was kind of quiet. And he's like, oh, is it my dead dad? Not a good topic. <laughs> and think, yeah. If there's anything <laughs> I've learned about my friend whose father mm. has passed. Everybody with a dead dad will make a dead dad joke at some point or another. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, damn, it's uh, worldwide. We got people in Germany doing the same shit. Yeah, everybody's just quiet. Like, they just, they look to him and just like, look away and they don't even say anything. And I'm like, anyways, basically. That's exactly yeah. how people react when my friend does the same thing. And she's like, it's a joke. You can laugh, but people are like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> awkward yeah they're like yeah anyway (laughs) so we got to go back to eric because it only happens then but eric he's put into a chair weird chair looks like the like the first electric chair electric chair yeah yeah weird ass chair a person yeah who's um kind of constructing some weird mechanism around his fucking face uh has like a raincoat on he puts on a necklace with a little coin is it a penny it looks like a penny. It looks like a penny, but I don't think it is. Uh, like I don't know. Does it, does it look like an American penny? I think they use francs. Yeah, but it looks like a penny. We'll call it penny because we're American. So, <laughs> and that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do. We <laughs> we Americanize everything. He gets strapped in, and I was like, "Oh shit, this kid's done for." And apparently, not being sex trafficked, which I don't know what's worse. <laughs> because I feel like he's about to get fried. Yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of alludes to that. Um, Like maybe this person's like really sadistic. The cops find a little boy who has burnt marks over his eyes. And Mm -hmm. so comparing uh, that to what Eric's being put into with this like strap or like metal um, container thing that goes around the eyes. Maybe, yeah, like maybe it's somebody who is sadistically like killing these kids and like wanting to see them die this way where maybe it burns out your eyes or something. Right. Um, so yeah, they find a younger boy, but it's not Mikhail. We like jump into the next scene where we've seen Eric being strapped into this machine that more than likely killed this other younger kid. And so at first when I was watching this, I thought, okay, yeah, this must be like, a really sadistic guy who just kills young boys like this and for some reason waits a really long time before he does it he wants to get like devo or the cure stuck in their brain yeah yeah it was like really weird uh uh he's lost in the past can't fucking help it yeah he's like we're listening to madonna <laughs> and you're gonna madonna. like it i love madonna though too I'd be, I'd be all right with that. I'm like, cool, man. Uh, uh, she's got a wide out. discography, but I feel like this, I could be totally pulling this out of my ass, but I swear, I remember being told as a child that at Guantanamo Bay, they were torturing prisoners by listening to, what's that song? By Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Genie in a Bottle. Uh-huh. Genie, really? They were blasting genie in a bottle over and over and over and over again as a method of torture. I could be pulling that out wow. of my ass, but I uh, that was told to me as a child. I don't know if it's real. Did not bother to fact check because at the end of the day, Guantanamo was fucked. <laughs> so doesn't matter what they did. They shouldn't have been doing Holy that. Holy shit. That's what I thought of when that was going on. Hearing right round blast. I was like, this poor kid's been listening to this for 20 20- four hours a day like nonstop. <laughs> either that or he's like i'm gonna try to make you my best friend and you're gonna like everything i like and uh, you're gonna love yeah, my music we'll... taste get yeah, a load of this spotify love... playlist <laughs> and you know it's crazy full circle yeah i think spotify is a german company no really i think so i'm gonna fact check i think it's like swedish or, or nordic Hold on. Spotify is a pri pri prior no 
Oh, fuck me. I can't. Man, dude, I got seventh grade English <laughs> reading skills. <laughs> Proprietary. Yeah, there we go. Swedish audio streaming and media service provider founded on 2006, April 23rd. Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> Sorry to put that on the German people. Again, everybody, we're American. We don't know everything. We don't know our geography. We do our best. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a historian. Yeah, we got 50 states to remember here and do our best to remember those. So uh, you got to excuse. I'm going to come clean right now. My first elementary school, the grade that you did the state projects and you learned all 50 states was fifth grade. I left in fourth grade and then I got to a new school. I entered fifth grade and their grade that they did all the state projects and learned all the states was fourth grade. So I bobbed and weaved out of that responsibility. <laughs> I'm getting better. Like now that I'm politically cognizant, I would say the region around Florida still confuses me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And then when people, have you seen those videos of people where they can like Google map, they can identify a country by a zoomed in image on Google maps. Um, yeah. And it, well, it doesn't display the name. You just can tell the shape and that's it. Like they, like, is that what you're, you're saying? They'll go and they zoom in on any given country any given city and they're like mm -hmm. oh the street signs are this shape and the lines in the road look like this i'm in bosnia and i'm like what the fuck <laughs> damn that's pretty good yeah it's really crazy. Uh, some people got some good memory dude for me like always trying to remember states i've always thought all right stick with the big ones first they're just massive so they're easier to kind of count like you go to alaska texas they're like most states in the west because they're just so huge then it gets trickier when you get to the east coast because they're like you know yeah. shuffled in small tiny you can almost kind of miss it looking at a map you know, mm -hmm. shit i can't name every state I, i'm almost 100 percent, but i could probably name a good majority i probably could get either 30 or 40 in and I'm like, well, all right, that's good enough. C's get degrees, <laughs> baby. So <You> see? <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Our show uh, kind of ends with uh, Eric being strapped into that, probably more likely um, meeting an untimely death arena. It's cuter when you add Eno on the end. <laughs> you know, yeah, death arena. I mean, they should just say that. They should have said that during 9-11. Yeah, uh, bomb arena. <laughs> <laughs> we got a death arena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, multiple death arenas. Um, <laughs> yeah, they should have done that. Um, and probably would have when I went to Iraq. We'll just soften the blow. And then when like Ulrich and Charlotte find that other kid that we presume was a victim of whoever strapped Eric in the chair. Mm -hmm. Obviously the Ulrich is his father, but I was like, damn, you can tell that that's not Mikkel. Just his face is fried. <laughs> like maybe it's because yeah. he knew what he was wearing, but I feel like a good majority of his face was burnt to an unrecognizable degree. So, I mean, that, but maybe I, it's just because he's his dad and, you know, was seeing his face for more than me, the viewer of like an hour. Right. I, I mean, I would hope my parent can identify me if they found me like destroyed or like, I don't know, like in the same situation. They're just, if they your just eyes know because you're a parent. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, but I, I mean, the hair is different. I uh, I felt like Mikhail had a like you know kind of like that emo. Yeah, that's creepy. It's a little long. Yeah, where this kid looked like he had like more of an even cut hair, and then like long too, but like it was more even to me at least where the bangs would be, and then the clothes. Oh, the Walkman. The Walkman kind of threw it out. Like what the fuck? Yeah, and those those Nikes were older, and not right. what Mikhail was wearing because he like I said. The skeleton onesie, dead giveaway. What a key and helpful thing to be wearing if you were to go missing. Just a skeleton onesie. Because everyone's True. gonna turn and look at you and be like, what are you wearing? <laughs> but Which... it, it could it be also too, like maybe this killer or whatever is like the 80s style killer. He just like dresses you up in 80s style clothes and gives you a walkman when he kills you. And then he makes you listen to the 80s music all like on loop, on repeat. <laughs> Oh. 80 style <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> what the fuck the 80 style killer strikes again the nostalgia baiter <laughs> the nostalgia baiter <laughs> yeah or was i the way i'm always one to criticize police obviously but like he just 
went in on what is an active crime scene and started touching stuff yeah and i was like hold i know this is your kid um but can you like just chill because like you want to know who did this right put some gloves on it yeah or yeah. like <laughs> get someone to photograph the scene before you touch it touch like mm. things touch his shoes touch the kid immediately they, they just like call it out they're like hey we found a body and then he's like <laughs> the forest and then he just starts touching on stuff and i was like <laughs> stop what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> He even I mean, touched his DNA. face. Yeah. He like, he like touched on his face. No one even stopped him, dude. They're just like... Yeah, Charlotte's like, hey, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like anybody would have pulled him away, right, in the real world. Because, I mean, you I can't fuck so. this up. If your DNA is here, then, yeah, who knows if it's not you who did it, right? Maybe everybody let it go because he his kid is gone and you know now it's it's not just somebody else's uh problem it's his problem because it's happened to his kid so you know yeah. different emotions arise it's it's personal now they just got my kid what's that guy's name um taken take uh liam neeson yeah he's gonna liam <laughs> neeson somebody's Whoever ass yeah. took his kid <laughs> so scary especially because it was around such like a sinister entity like the cave and i i'm not claustrophobic but like i've seen people spelunk in caves and they make me nervous (laughs) that's what they call it on spelunk right well i think spelunking is when you like repel into them with uh like Mm. rock climbing material and you right i'm not a scientist I'm not a geographer. I'm not, not a, sp- a, spelunker. a spelunker. So just don't hold me to that. But I just like the word spelunk. Too spelunk. That shit scares the fuck out of me. People who, who get stuck and then they can't get out, whatever. And then they have these rescue teams and they can't get them out. And I'm like, oh, it, it has to be the worst feeling in the world having to die that way. And then they, you're just, you're just stuck and that's it, you know? And then that, and then the untimely deaths of people who go and climb Mount Everest and then they just, mm-hmm. yeah, they die and their bodies are still up there. And, you know, people who just climb and stuff and still see their bodies to this day is really fucking whack to me. Uh, but you know what? They, they did doing what they loved. So good for them. <laughs> that's, that's such what? A, you're right. You're right. I mean, they wanted to do that no one forced him so i mean it's the truth right i don't know you, you uh, know yeah you're right it's just still so blind because <laughs> they're like i i, I God. they fell off a mountain or they like suffocated in a cave and you're just like mm. find what you love and let it kill you <laughs> let it kill you. yeah it do you like rewatching this has made me so excited to dive back into this series because it's so good it's so good and I'm so excited <laughs> and like the score alone I was like I after my partner finished the series we listened to I say we I was involuntary I was just there but like my partner was listening to the score for at least like three months after we finished it's so good it Mm. adds so much to the show so alexander wurzt i hope you're getting it eaten from the back (laughs) Uh, yeah i'm pretty sure he is uh one way or another you know what i mean damn yeah i agree uh good score um good cinematography good actors good casting um the show is uh, it's phenomenal uh i wish and hope maybe after this and whenever this goes on many much more people will watch the show yes like please and we could talk to you about it because we're dying out here we're dying or like, i mean it's like being a being trapped in a planet where we're the only people who can talk about this because i've also given it like tried to introduce it to other people and they watch the first couple episodes and they it like falls off but i really do think it's fatigue of not wanting to read the subtitles and i'm like don't watch it when you're tired 
because then you're not going to want to read the subtitles you're going to like fall asleep and then you know like lose the plot be like oh where was i on what episode because you know netflix just plays like five episodes after you fall asleep <laughs> like don't watch it when you're tired it's so worth the investment it's i i would um yeah i recommend reading the subtitles and uh, the first time you watch it if you want to go back to it maybe do it in English but I I don't really like to take uh, foreign media that way because it I feel it loses out in the the creative juices of like what they're trying to put out and show to you like with the squid games that came out uh what two years ago everybody who watched it in english like say they didn't really like it but if you watched it in korean then it was a lot more enjoyable that way i've switched and i was like what the fuck right and this is this is really goofy for me it's like the the sinking of the mouths when Mm. they're speaking like german or korean or japanese and then I'm listening to English being spoken over it and how it doesn't sync with the mouths. It pisses me off. Like it does not look right to me and it makes me mad, but it's also like specifically in German and I'm sure it goes for a lot of other languages, but I know firsthand in German that they have so many words for things we do not have words for in English. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the ability for it to be conveyed is probably missing it's probably there's probably still a bridge between german and the english subtitles but i know the way that it gets dubbed in english it i feel like it gets even further watered down so it's it's well worth the the subtitles over over the dubbed absolutely but i'm so excited we're doing this because goddamn it's such a good show we got what i think 26 episodes is the whole show i think i think there's eight in season two eight in the third and then 10 in the first season so would that be 26 am i doing math correctly uh i am not a scientist i am not a geographer i am not a mathematician (laughs) yeah oh that's that that should be i'm pretty sure that's the amount of episodes so if i am correct then that's another incentive the show is not long it has a good run time which i think is a curse for many shows that they go on for so long and you almost lose the the whole reason why you're doing the show you lose the reason for the season you lose the plot you forget who you are yeah (laughs) exactly yeah it, it just knows when to end it knows how to tell a story you won't get bored. You just keep wanting to dive in until it's finally done. Then you will be like one of us where you're reflecting on it so much. And then you have no one to talk to about it. Except and us. And you're just trapped in your mind. You go crazy. And then, you know, sooner or later, they put you in a stray jacket. And then, you know, you're... And then you're with Eric you're in that tiny room. And you're getting strapped to the electric yeah. chair. <laughs> so and your friend is so, dating your girlfriend and you get sent off to the loony bin but you were really in france wink wink france <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> where's my baguette yeah didn't oh. bartosh say like yeah, yeah i told them you were in france playing hide the baguette and i was like is that an innuendo <laughs> like hide your penis but bartosh was saying he was playing hide the baguette with marta so Mm, these freaking europeans man freaks oh no i'm just kidding kind of probably more than more than other people i feel like yeah um isn't that the thing the national consensus that europeans are more sexually freeing or free well this might get cut from the episode but i did i tell you about my german mishap on discord no oh uh, well <laughs> wait maybe may i don't think so but t- tell me i was looking into you know like going into potentially oh 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 oh, 100 yeah yeah okay i kind of remember now yeah i remember now anyway germans Mm -hmm. be freaks Mm -hmm. sexually but you know love you heart (laughs) (laughs) yes well um guys guys and gals and everyone in between um this is i know what you watched last summer uh signing off uh frankie you have any plugins yeah before we leave we'll catch you on the next one i'm so excited you can i've finally come out of hibernation on youtube so you can follow me there i have another one coming i need to go edit it right now right after this um so frankie stein sfx on youtube instagram my backup tiktok account doubt i honestly tiktok might get banned (laughs) so we'll see how that goes 
you can do Frankie's Thoughts, which was my main one, T-H-O-T-S on TikTok, Twitter, um, also Frankie's Nine SFX. So pretty uniform. Also, email the show if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or can you just let us know that you've also watched Dark, please? <laughs> <laughs> so please, yes. send up a flare wave a flag um <laughs> i know what you watched at gmail.com bada bing what about you bada bing. <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> i'll have some plugins but uh I'm, I'm playing the normal man game for now um but i'm always here to glorify uh and uh make sure you get you know, all the, the maximum attention and spotlight that's so pretty <laughs> 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 I'm I'm like uh Frankie's hype man. <laughs> Always, you know. Yeah, give it up for Frankie Stein. You're the guy in the back yep. of my my freestyle that's like, yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I try to be the best MC that I can. Um, but, but as for now, and then um we'll say goodbye and uh we'll see you in the next episode. All right. Bye y'all. Love you. Bye. Bye.